welcome back to the channel. It is day two. Put all of my tools here so that it was bright and visual so that nobody got too uh, discombobulated in the night and ended up falling down a hole. That wouldn't have been good. So that's there. I'm going to be clearing this out and I'm going to be finishing up these battens. I had an idea in the night and I don't know whether this is a fool's errand or if it's genius but I'm going to clear up and I'll show you in a second what my plan is for how to get this tray nice and level with minimal disruption. So you'll see here because the joist is so out I've set it at 18 mil here could have set it at 18 mil at that end but I didn't but then I have leveled the batten because this is what the plywood is going to be sitting on and this area here will take far more of the of the weight and the strain than this will and either way this joist will be sat below so there'll be an almost continuous level save for the width of this joist here I've done the same on this side so that's dead level which is really good but you'll see when I take this level here I've set this to this to a depth of 18 mil. So that's 18 mil there. And that's that's nice and flat on here, but at this end it's raised up by quite a bit to account for the fact that this joist isn't that level. So what I'll do is I will set it to 18 mil down on this side as well. So I will set the I'll set the joist down here at 18 mil, and then I will level across between the two from here. I'll, I'll level this with itself, and then I will make sure that these are level one to another as well, because that's that's quite important. So this is the Mira Flight shower tray. It's got a blue protective film on it, on it at the minute, but you can see what I mean about the built-in fall getting bigger to run the water down to the hole, which is perfectly placed above the joist. Now I have a little bit of movement this way or this way. What I would ideally like to do is tile down onto the shower like this and then have, you know, come down and have a little ledge of tiles, almost like this, you know, have that ledge of tiles connected at that point there. But if I was to shunt the tray down, then it would mean notching a lot less of this joist out. Obviously the joist is getting reinforced. I, you know, I can really brace that joist very nicely using the battens that I've got that are 19 by 38. So they're very, very sturdy, solid timbers. But this is really unhelpful. I, I cannot overstate how unbelievably heavy this shower tray is. It is so sturdy. And look at the back of it, it is filled with cement. It's solid cement with this kind of uh, cap on the top and on the bottom. And look at all of this reinforcement. It's, it's really very impressive. And you know, you can raise them up with leg supports on those dots there, and then you'd have one in the middle. But look at this, right? So these, these supports only run around the edge. If you're going to raise this thing up, you'd have them all around the edge and one in the middle. And the, and it's strong enough that it wouldn't have any support here or here. So it's it's very, very impressive the way they make these things and it really is heavy. So pretty pretty nifty uh, nifty piece of kit. I'm very impressed. It comes with its own waist and everything so that's all fine and I can get that out to here. So that's that's good. I obviously am going to have a piece of plywood here, but I need something to connect it to on the other side. These timbers here are a little bit in the way, but I'm, I'm going to have to sort them out. But there is another joist here. What I've done is I have made an 18mm spacer that sits flush with the top of this joist. And what I will do is I'll screw it to this here. and. I'll get it the right length, obviously this is just a short tester piece, but I'll screw it to this and then I'll drop it in, offer it up hard against the hard against the joist and tie it up against the underside of these 
and then at least that'll that'll be in place and then I should hopefully be able to slide a piece of plywood in there that's that's the hope anyway that's that that's the plan that's the hope first thing I'm going to do is measure the distance between this joist and that joist because once the once this is in it will make it hard to get a tape measure in so measure that make a note of it I'll measure it here and there to take an average so yeah that's the, that's the plan it's a little bit finicky but if we take your time over these things it, it is possible where I've got this pipe here and this here with the waste and everything it's it's a real pain what I think I'm going to do is actually well I'm in two minds but I think I might cut this back here and then I will attach now that this is the only thing on here I think I will attach flex or pex down and I'll drill drill a hole through the joist and I'll run it down and through. This this is going to need to sit down here anyway, and the ply will be sat at, sat at the same height as this. But that's not going to work. I you know having the so I, I want this going down and through. So I've got some pex and I will run 15 mil. I'll put a connection on here, a T, and I'll and I'll run a run it through because it's not it's not going to work properly otherwise. But I can do all of the other bits first. That would be the last thing I do. You know, yeah, that that that's not an issue right this second. But I think that's to get this out of the way because I've got the waste, you know, coming in here like that to then go down into the waste there. I just I, I don't really want the uh, the hassle of it. A uh, slight think and change of plan. I am absolutely certain that if I was to run a batten like this on the other joist over there, as soon as I slide this piece of plywood down. I'm going to drop it or I won't be able to get it up and in and flat and I'll be contending with these. So what I've done is I'm going to put stretchers across instead. I've kind of done these pocket screw style thing and then I'll have it, you know, let's stretch across here like this and I'll have another one up here like this and it will catch nicely and then it actually gives me something when I put the sheet of plywood on something to slide on. Obviously this will be once this is out of the way and drilled through and under there. All right, this is pretty cool. We're on one, two, three of these bearers and we are just about as close as level as I can get given that I can't see and hardly feel anything. I was using a little wooden shim. So that is good, I'm happy with that. And now when I get the piece of ply and I slide it on, that will work really well. So that's perfect. Obviously, it's going to be it's going to be an issue getting under there for the copper pipe, but I'll deal with that later. <laughs> I'll deal with that later. For now, I'm going to finish getting these on, and I can start cutting some of the slithers of ply. I'm going to have to think about how I support the ply up here. That is going to be really good fun, given that I don't have a joist connecting here. And I don't really think I've got enough access to be able to run a run a little bearer across here. I, I might be able to get to the end of my impact driver in there. We will have to see on that one. I would hope so. I would hope so, because I'll drill and roll plug and go straight into the brick, and then the ply can sit on that. That'll be fine. Lots to contend with. Looky, looky. 22 mil, down to 15 pecs. Coming along here. Nice and clear, nice and low down, out of the way. And then it comes up again. I've already put the floor down because I wanted to reconnect it all. Pecs coupled to copper. An isolator. This toilet's getting changed in time, so at that point we'll do it properly. And we'll. For now, what I can do is I can carry on getting these battens across, and then I'll probably call it there for the day. It's Friday, it's 10 to 5. I've got a few more battens that I want to get on, as I say. But then I, tomorrow, all of that will be dry, and I can get the second coat on, and I can then get the marine ply down in order to. Fit, fit, fit the shower tray and then tile down on top. So you can see I am nice and level across these battens 
and along the battens as well on each of these which is excellent makes a big difference so now I'll continue to level them across this way kind of using these notches to try and get diagonal levels like this and that way I should be able to get a nice even fall well actually a perfectly flat level base and so long as it is less than 18 mil which it is this is currently around 17 mil that works perfectly so yeah it's uh, getting there it's now five past five so I'm just gonna zip this along and I'll show you what I've done afterwards but it might be that this picks up tomorrow morning this is all cleared up now which is great I've got access it suddenly reminded me that before I finish counter battening and try to level this out I have to spray down the wall and finish off this coat of hard wall here so that I can leave that to dry so that later on I can then come around and tile so I'm just going to quickly dive on get that done use, use the rest of the tub and uh, yeah I'll set you up on the time lapse now That's got a little bit of time now to set. Let's face it, it's not the prettiest, but it's going to be covered with tiles. The difficulty is the thickness here of what the depth of that is so thick that it wouldn't have set, like even some of this bits haven't fully set. So tiling is going to be the last thing that I do. Right, for my idea, what I'm thinking is the 18 mil ply is going to sit on top of here and on top of here and it will effectively ride over these bits but I'll have to cut, make cuts and sit them on top of. If I was to get my multi cutter and run the blade across here straight across to the other side so it's perfectly level between here and here and just chop this bit off and there and there and there and clean up basically all of these middle sections there's absolutely no reason why I couldn't then just cut one big sheet of ply and just sit it down in one go and then screw it down into here or here as long as I miss the pipes it makes no difference at all these pipes here are the same height as as this batten I checked that I got the spirit level across all of this and that that cap there does sit at this height but that's okay it's these that are difficult I guess that's where it becomes a bit of a challenge. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking at the minute. Genius or madness, I'm not sure which yet. But I think, I think that might be an effective way to stop me having to cut lots of little bitty bits and prop them up in different places and just have one continuous sheet of ply that goes down across here and is, is, is stronger the whole way across. I thought I had my time lapse on and I didn't. Anyway, I've been multi-cutting these out as you'll see. And now I am much, much closer. This end being higher is definitely the better of the two. If this end is higher, the water will flow down. Yes, there is a built-in fall, but over the space of 1.6 meters, you are not going to feel that too much. That being said, I am gonna try my best to level this side up or this side down, depending. And because I've taken these out, I can I can raise these up ever so slightly on the joists. I mean, it, it, it really is the case of a couple of millimeters over this distance. So whether you feel it or not, I, I'm not sure, but this method seems to be working. I've got a big stretch to get out here and here, which I'm not especially looking forward to, if I'm honest, because it is so noisy and tiring, but um, that, that's, that it's, it's actually going pretty well. It's this area over here that's gonna be fun. What I have done is I notched this out more and I've dropped this lead pipe down. Yes, I have gloves. Yes, I used them, but then I took them off when I was doing this because I didn't, I found it. I don't know, I'd, wearing gloves while using a multi-cutter, I find really uncomfortable. So anyway, gloves for that, no gloves for this. Got to keep going up here. But yeah, I, it looks like this is fading out actually anyway. So it might be that I only need to take a nibble off the top here as it is. 
So yeah, I'll keep going. I'll keep taking these bits off and these these areas and then moving this along and testing it and seeing seeing where we end up. But for now, this method is actually working quite well and it means I can just put one big slab down which will be much much stronger and it will help support, you know, I can put I can put a batten across here on the wall and I can help support the corners a little bit stronger too. I'm really pleased that I had that with me and my earplugs because that took a long time but it was very very beneficial look at that dead level about as dead level as you're gonna get in a 1930s house which is really good this sits under just it's a little bit high but I think I can I, th I think I can get away with it so yeah you can see where it's just a little bit high there on that on that pipe so i need to just gently eat, persuade that down this is much much better as well so I'm, I'm i'm really really pleased with how this has come out now this is ready for nice big piece of plywood now to head off some questions in the comments about why i went ahead with uh, the battens even if even though I was going to chop down because originally I was just going to infill well I have taken some of the structural strength out of the timbers so from a structural point of view we all like a little bit of extra support in our lives and these battens are no different so 38 by 25 mil super strong which is good I've just noticed there's a little one there I need to trim down as well second point by putting these in like this, I was able to get these dead level this way and level to one another and then I could take off the difference in the middle. So now I know I have a perfectly level area. That would have been really hard to achieve any other way. Even if I had used my laser level, which I brought with me, I would have only had the laser coming from one side and it could have, you know, the blade could have moved. By having a blade either side, it just gave me something to work to. So that's just... It's just much better doing it like that. And now by putting one big continuous sheet down, I think I'm gonna put a batten on here just to catch it at the other end there. But at the point that I've done that, I'm really comfortable that this is gonna be a super strong flat big area to support the weight of the tray and anybody that uses it. And the beams are reinforced as well, like I mentioned. So double or triple win. Whichever way you look at it. I'm going to clean this out. I don't really like leaving loads of mess. It's kindling. It's unlikely to ever catch fire, but I'm going to have a little bit of a clear out in here, including these 1930s newspapers that were left in here. So, um, yeah, I'm going to have a little tidy up, and then I can get a nice big sheet of plywood measured and cut once I've put a batten along there. <laughs> 